now we will be talking about refracting telescope. Uh, previously we spoke about refracting telescope. Uh, we will continue the same topic with reflecting. But, uh, so what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to look at the primary focus. This is basically working on the principle of laws of reflection. Uh, where the light comes and bounces back to the from the mirror. So it's a very simple technique uh, and a very basic technique. But the problem here is that to make a mirror, it's a very complicated procedure. Uh, in order to uh, make sure the uh, uh, how to make a mirror, if somebody asks you a question like how do you actually make a mirror, uh, it's a uh, it's a very nice process where you take two plain uh, plain lines, uh, you scrub it on each other until you get a nice concave C on it and uh, then you while you are grinding you put some carbon and grit powder and seismic oxide and make sure you get the proper C and there are no impurities or dust particles lying on that and then you give an aluminium coating to it and then your mirror is ready but making a huge mirror is a very big task and I have kept telling the class making a reflecting telescope is much harder because making such a huge mirror like the mirror in Kali, which is uh, 1.3 meter telescope, it's a huge mirror. 1.3 meter is a huge telescope, and the focal length you need a huge uh, uh, panel to catch it. So uh, the main point here is concave mirror behaves as a reflector, and similar to a refractor, lights of different wavelengths fall at different focal points. You can see there is one point here, one point here, because light has different wavelengths. Uh, so you see these different focuses and every color is of different wavelength in wave pair. So it's very important that we know we, uh, this part is called as spherical aberration. This part is called spherical aberration. In previous uh, refractor it was called chromatic aberration and here it is called spherical aberration. In order to correct this problem what we do is we remove this concave mirror part and we replace it with a parabolic shape mirror to remove the aberration and so that the uh, lens won't sag on its own way and it's easy to make and uh, it's very reliable and uh, most of the modern day telescopes are based on this and uh, and it is more advantageous than the reflector uh, refractor telescope so reflector is much better compared to a refracting telescope and much easier, much easier to fabricate also. I won't say it's a very easy thing, but it's much better, much easier compared to a refractor. So, uh, I would say for having a reflector telescope is much uh, better compared to a refractor telescope. And um, uh, and this is it about the uh, uh, reflector telescope. Now I would like to talk a little bit briefly on space telescopes, which is the final part of your telescope chapter and, uh, of, and also the telescopes in India. So space telescopes, we have many good space telescopes. First I will talk about telescopes in India. In India we have uh, one infrared telescope in Himalaya, Himalaya uh, that is called Himalayan Chandra Telescope. HCT in Hanlet, located in Hanlet, uh, and we have one radio telescope for in uh, uh, in form of GMRT, giant uh, uh, radio telescope. So, and also we have uh, our big Asia's largest uh, telescope, optical telescope, located in Kavu, Tamil Nadu, and uh, we have doing good. Our country is doing good science with it, and uh, we are happy that uh, we are in a good race in astronomy and we have very few astro radio astronomers as such and we uh, the GMRT goes for very high frequency in order to go for low frequency you have to go abroad like Netherlands and uh, you have to write proposals and you have to uh, work there so coming back to the space telescope part uh, we uh, and uh, you know, in space telescope the advantage than a grown observatory is you don't have any clouds or any um, any disturbance in between. So everything, you know, because light is the only information we get, and this passes through a lot of dust, gas, and other atmospheric effects. So in order to uh, uh, have a much better view of the starlight and get more data out of it, we have a lot of space telescopes. 
uh, we have one from India called AstroSat, which is an ultra UV IT telescope. It can do in far UV and near UV. And uh, going to other space telescopes, uh, you people would be pretty much familiar with Hubble Space Telescope, which did wonders, and uh, the new planetary finding telescopes like uh, Carrot mission from French ESA. Uh, and Kepler Space Telescope, which did a great job before it retired. Uh, rather than retired, I would say ran out of fuel. Uh, and uh, we have uh, a test telescope for uh, Transit Exoplanetary Telescope, which is working right now. Um, and also, uh, we have other stellar uh, based uh, mission telescopes like Gaia uh, Space Telescope, Wise Space Telescope. Uh, WISE is basically an infrared telescope and uh, these are very uh, beautiful telescopes which can give you much more detail into what you are studying and uh, this would be a wonderful way of understanding things in a very systematic manner. Uh, so in order to answer these kind of questions relating to space and other things, I, I think uh, we can just go through different windows like visible, IR, UV and mention all the telescopes and read accordingly and make more sort of it. Uh, that would be an easier task and as it's a very basic astronomy course, I think that should be enough for your examination point of view. And also talking about the examination point of view, uh, we have gone through the entire astronomy course, by, by this I, I have finished the entire syllabus. Uh, uh, basically, the main important uh, questions uh, that has to be uh, uh, studied is uh, hydrostatic equilibrium of a star, uh, uh, magnet, uh, magnitude relationship, how apparent and absolute magnitudes work, and uh, you have to work about. Uh, you have to also think about uh, parallax. How do you measure distances using parallax technique and uh, like trigonometric parallax, stellar parallax, and also uh, these are the very basic questions, which is most probable questions, and also you will have uh, more things to write about surface temperature. And you people are very much familiar with the basic parameters like the physical properties of the star like luminosity and you know luminosity is basically energy times the surface area, energy is uh, sigma t power 4 and 4 pi r square because the sphere. So or, uh, what you have supposed to do is you are just going to equate the Stephen's black body radiation equation, energy equation and multiply it with the area so that you get luminosity and uh, luminosity of, upon the surface area and uh, will give you brightness 4 pi d square uh, and uh, then you go on with the surface temperature and you will work and also you will be studying about how surface temperature is related with color uh, and you know UV B filters which are very primary and uh, U is uh, transparent in ultraviolet, V is for visible, B is for blue wavelength so you know these are the very basic stuff which I have given a brief write up of what is required so with this I think you'll be able to have a solid material if you just study my notes and uh, if you solve those problems related to this I think that should be it so all the best and uh, we'll try to catch up during the examination thank you